voting yes. Um, I think that the results of the 2015 elections clearly show that elections now matter in Nigeria. Uh, electronic voting perhaps can enhance the process, but remember we just had elections in Kenya that were annulled because uh, the server was proved to have been tampered with. So technology may not be uh, the all-in-all -all solution. I'm sure technology can help, but that is not the problem. Elections do matter in Nigeria. Even the semi-analog elections we had in 2015 were credible. The problem is those that we elect. Elections are like a beauty contest. The prettiest woman or the prettiest girl is not usually Miss World because she is probably in somebody's house as a wife. It is those, yeah, it is those that offer themselves that form the population that you choose from. So yes, she's a, you know Miss Miss England or Miss Nigeria is prob will probably be a very beautiful woman, but she's not the most beautiful woman in England or Nigeria. She's just perhaps the most beautiful woman out of the 20 that put themselves forward. So unless you improve the quality of those that put themselves forward, whether elections matter or not will not result to better outcomes. This is my point. This is my appeal to Nigerians, particularly those in diaspora, to get off criticizing online and come back and be engaged in the political process. Your criticisms count for nothing. It is actual involvement, getting your hands dirty at shaping how political parties select candidates that will make Nigeria better. Not just the election itself. The election is just one. And we are past that stage. I think Jega's reforms have already ensured that elections in Nigeria are likely to continue to be free, fair, and credible. We can put more technology into it, but the key issue is who do we vote for? And what is the quality of the persons that we can vote for? I think that's uh, where we need to focus our attention. How to make use to be engaged? We, 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 we try to get the youths engaged. But what we find is that youths come into the political process with a sense of entitlement. Nobody gives you power. You have to get involved and fight and negotiate for it. If youth think that old guys will just hand over power to them because they are young, they're making a mistake. That it has not happened anywhere in the world. It will not happen. The issue is involvement and getting engaged and making contributions. Then you'll have a way. And I don't agree that youths cannot be voted for. The minimum age uh, for uh, contesting elections in Nigeria is 21. You can, you can contest for local government chairmanship, councillor, uh, even state assembly, I think even national assembly is 20-something. President is 30, I think, or 40. I think it's 30. So it is not true that young people have no opportunity to contest. It is just that they come in with a sense of entitlement without getting involved in the process and negotiating and getting the support of the party and the leadership, you don't go anywhere. You can continue shouting that you're young, but hey, we are young too at one time. <laughs> uh, um, social activists that, you know, young people think they don't have a chance. You see, this is a chicken and egg situation. So long as young people believe they don't have a chance and stay away, they will never be there. My appeal to young people, and I work a lot with them, and uh, I engage very actively on social media, largely because I want to encourage young people not to repeat the mistakes I made. Because until the age of 45, I did not believe in politics or joining political parties or engaging uh, in politics. It was after I had served as minister and left office that I realized the primacy of politics over everything. You, I, I say this again and again to all the young people I talk to. Politics trumps everything. You can go and do your NGO, be social activist, and so on. You will never change the world unless you are Bill Gates with tons of money. All right? <laughs> the way to change your environment is to participate in the political process. And you cannot do so without getting your hands dirty. You'll be disappointed. You'll be frustrated. But it is your country, it is your future. I am 57 years old. Maybe I have two more decades to live. Maybe three, if I live very long. My family, yeah, 
doesn't last long. Okay? But those of you that are in your 20s and 30s, in an age when medical technology is improving every day, some of you may live to be 100. You have five, 70 years of your life ahead of you. If you don't get involved now to change the future and shape it, we'll leave behind to you a nation that you don't like. The best example is here in the UK, Brexit. If the young people had come out in the numbers that they needed to, to vote for their future, maybe the Brexit outcome would have been different. And this is a warning to young people across the world, particularly in Nigeria. You are 80% of the population. Since the moment, get involved. It won't be easy. It will not be easy, but you don't have a choice. And uh, you can be social activists, you can do all this, but at the end of the day, you must get involved in the political process at one level or another if you want to change and shape your future. There is no alternative. The, platform the platforms exist. There, there are no barriers to join. The platforms exist. But they need to come in without any sense of entitlement and be ready to serve and work hard and be frustrated. But in the end, they will prevail because they have the numbers, they have the brains, they have the access to the technology. Many of us cannot switch on a PC. We are on our way out. But you have to come in to push us out. And you must.